Hello, my name is Eduardo, and today I am here with a new tutorial for App Inventor, and this is my first tutorial in this channel in English. Okay, well, as you will know, my first language is not English, so please just be patient, please. Okay, so basically, for today, we are going to start like animating sprites. Okay, I will show you. So we are going to have this kind of very simple thing. We have a Mario two sprites. Um, then we are going to have here uh, this platform and we are going to use this button just to enable Mario for walking and that's it and we can stop Mario and that's it so that's pretty simple and to make things easier for you and for me okay and to make this video a little bit shorter okay I will share this um, starting file that it has all the arrangements okay it has the sprites okay and everything is ready just to follow this tutorial okay so just go uh, to the description of this video and you will be able to download the project or the AIA file so don't forget to check my patreon page or also if you want to support my my videos please uh, consider donating to my PayPal account or Patreon so we're going to start so we have this this is the initial project okay so we have this kind of thing okay so everything is like disorganized so we have to start organizing everything if we go to the blocks also we have here I have added three uh, in this case three procedures the first thing that I want is to initialize everything by that I mean that uh, I want my pixels or sprites to be in play. Uh, just let's review something. I have here my screen. Then I have an horizontal arrangement that it's set to 85% of the height of the canvas. Then we have that this uh, horizontal arrangement is covering the 90% of the width of the screen. Then I just use like center, center color white just to make this kind of uh, illusion of a frame and in the canvas I use these values 80% of the screen and 85% of the width of the screen and that's it that's all for this thing and then I just drag my sprites a clock that is an invisible uh, component and a button and we're going to go to the blocks and the first thing as I told you is that we are going to uh, set the size and position for everything in the screen so we're going to start with the platform well we're going to check the platform sprite we're going to look for its properties and we are going to set the height of this platform i mean the, well you can drag any of the platform then we look for height and then we have height also for the width so we can duplicate this so you just uh, use like right mouse button duplicate and then we just change this to width so we're going to use here some math we're going to multiply some values okay so we want the height of this uh, platform sp sprite to be like i don't know like 15 percent of the height of the canvas and then we're going to use it's high value we're going to get it so and then we're going to multiply this times 0.15 so that it's that it means that it's the 15 percent times 0.15 and then we're going to do the same for the other one but in the other case for the width i just want to be i just want it to be the width of the canvas so we change this to width we have the platform 15 percent of the height of the canvas of the canvas and then we have the width that it has to be the same size of the canvas now we cannot see anything because we haven't loaded anything okay so when you have a procedure the procedure you have the values here or the commands but they are not going to be worked if they are not called so you have to call them going to procedures and then you are going to call initialize game and we're going to insert this initialize game that it's from this inside the screen initialize block so if we refresh everything we can refresh we can go here to screen 
you can write anything here and then it's refreshing everything and you check now it's the right size now we have to place it in the correct place so now just very fast if you want to place something remember that you have x and y so x it's moving here okay from left to right and y it's moving from uh, the top to the bottom of the screen so now if you want to move something to the right you have to increase the x value if you want if you want to move something to the left you have to decrease the x value now if you want to move something up you have to decrease the value if you write for example zero okay so let's do it okay because this is very important to understand so let's move the platform first the y no i guess the x it doesn't have any problem because it is placed so we write here platform sprite and then we're going to use something similar to this because it's the y we are going to base this in position by percentage if we set it to the zero percentage it's going to move this up or down what do you think so the lower the value okay it will go the uh, up let's just do on run this procedure if you have companion connected you just run the procedures like this but uh, right click round and right mouse button here or click whatever then you just click do it and now zero it's over here and if you write 100 percent that it's one you run it and it's over here so well basically that it's the the idea with the platform so we can set it like 90 percent times this is the 90 percent of the height of the campus if you want it more or less in the middle you just write like 0.5 that is the 50 percent so that's the way to place sprites in your uh, canvas so let's write it just 0.9 that is the 90 percent now we have to place mario so we're going to place mario if you check mario is almost in the middle okay so we are going to just go for mario sprites and then we're going to check its y position so we are going to do something similar as uh, with the platform so we're going to select here this one and we're going to duplicate right button here and that's it we have height and now we're going to if we do it like 90 percent let's see what happens let's run all the procedure now that's not good for us so let's try i don't know probably 75 or something we are going to adjust this and we just run the procedure more or less so what about 72 percent and that's it and that's it we have height and now we are going to if we do it like 90 percent let's see what happens let's run all the procedure now that's not good for us so let's try i don't know probably 75 or something we are going to adjust this and we just run the procedure more or less so what about 72 percent and that's it so this is the thing that we want to run at the beginning of the game so we have initialize now what's next we are going to make mario walking so for that we are going to create some variables first okay so we are going to create one variable here and another variable and now the first variable we are going to call it is running mario and we are going to set its value to true or false well at the beginning mario is not running so we are going to set it to false mario is not running at the beginning now if you check i have three frames but we are going to use actually two frames it's one frame one and frame two it's just for walking and frame three is for jumping now for the second variable we're going to write it like we're going to call it mario frames and that's it and then we're going to set the value to probably zero uh, now we're going to go to 
the thing that it's going to move Mario. So for that, we're going to create here a procedure that it's walking Mario, and we're going to start adding some blocks. First, we are going to check if Mario is running. We're going to use this set the value. First, we are going to set the value to true. Okay, here. This is not necessary yet. Okay, let's keep it there. So I press the button and this property is going to change. Now it's true. Now we're going to add a condition. We're going to set it here. And now we are going to check the frames of Mario. So we are going to say, okay, if, and then we are going to check the frames. Remember that the Mario frames we have in zero. If the frames are less than frames, Mario frames, are less than and we're going to write here in the in this case we're going to use just two frames so what it's going to happen well we are going to set mario frames we're going to increase this value we are going to use this mario frames plus one we write the one and that's it and then what it's going to happen well we are going to change the picture that it's going to change to the next frame, that it's frame one, frame two, frame one, frame two, frame one. Frame two. To do that, we're going to use uh, Mario sprites, and then we're going to check for picture, set Mario picture to... If you check the names, we have number one, it's one point PNG, two point PNG, or dot. So we're going to set the name. So to do that, we're going to use check. In text, we're going to use join. So the name, it's the number. So we just duplicate this one. And now the extension is PNG, okay? So we are going to add here another block called .png, PNG. And that's it. We are going to start like changing frames. So we're going to call this procedure in the clock. Walk in Mario. Now, the next thing that we need to do, it's to check, well, it's going to change if this is less than two, it's going to increase. At the beginning it was zero, so it's going to increase and it's going to be frame one point, uh, dot PNG. And then it's going to increase again in the next cycle of the clock and it's going to be two uh, dot PNG. And then it's going to stop because the condition it won't be like a uh, met to avoid that and to create a loop we are going to add an else here what happens if the number wants to be bigger than two okay well we are going to set mario frames well let's write here mario frames and we're going to set it to one we stop it here and then we're going to change this okay we're going to do the same with this one duplicate and that's it now the clock is disabled so we need to enable the clock well for that we're going to work with stop mary so well if i try it now nothing is working because we have anything in the click button so how can we stop mario well, in this case, we're going to add another condition, a very long condition, and it's going to check what I told you before. Let's check if Mario is running or not. Global, the variable, we're going to check the variable. Is Mario running equals to? If it's running, that means that it's true, right? So if Mario is running, that's the way that we are going to stop it. Only if this condition is met. We are going to stop the clock. Time and enable. And we are going to stop it. Okay, so to stop the clock, we are going to set it to false. Okay, and then we are going to reset the frames. Okay. And uh, because Mario is going to be like this in this position, so with frame number one, so we are going to use probably set Mario picture again, set Mario picture, 
Mary picture, Mary picture, what is picture? Okay. We're going to set Mary picture. And we're going to set it to one. So, but in this case, we're going to duplicate this one also. So first the frame and then the picture, we duplicate this one. And that's it, it's going to reset this. Now, after this, so we check that this variable is true. So at the end of this procedure, sorry, we are going to set or change the variable to false because we have done it. Okay, we have stopped him. So we can go for logic and when we set it to false. So we can go for logic and when we set it to false. And then we're going to continue. What happens if this is not, if Mario is not in true? Well, if it's in false, we are going to enable the clock. So that means that Mario is stopped. So we're going to add here an else. And we're going to drag this here. Now we are going to use here, enable the clock. And that's it. And now we're going to add this stop Mario procedure. We're going to call it when we press the button. So now we check, press the button. Mario is running. And then we stop. Stop. But now the text, check the text. The text is not like working. Okay. So you can just leave it like that or you can add the text. So to do that, we are going to go to the stop Mario procedure. And we are going to check. Okay. So, well, how can we stop this? So let's go to the button and then check the text property set. We're going to set it and we're going to drag it over here. And we're going to change this to walk Mario because this is going to be like stopping Mario. So that means that the button is going to move Mario. Now we're going to duplicate this one. And then we're going to change this one to stop Mario in the else. Stop Mario. And I guess that's that's the thing. I don't know if it's, uh, we're missing something, but let's check it. Walk Mario. Okay. And the button says, oh, stop Mario, please. And we stop Mario. Walk Mario. Stop Mario. Now, if you want to change the speed that the sprites are changing, you can go to the designer, then you check the clock and you can change the interval. Okay, so probably you want to set it to, I don't know, probably 95. 95, 45, I'm sorry. And check, it's faster. Or if you want it very slowly, you want you can change it to, I don't know, 125. Okay, so it's just what you think. Okay, I like this one, 125. So we change the speed, we stop. Now just let's check, we refresh the screen. And we're almost done with this. By the way, if you are enjoying this tutorial, please don't forget to leave a like. Okay, share this video with someone who is learning App Inventor. So, try to follow this tutorial using the uh, project that I uh, uh, left you in the description of this video. My name is Eduardo. I hope you like this um, tutorial, this basic tutorial about how to animate sprites in App Inventor. So, maybe, maybe, maybe for the next time we're going to work on how to make Mario jump. Well, if you like the video, as I told you, I hope you leave a like okay, and share it. If you have any questions, please uh, write them in the comments. So, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching this video. Goodbye.